Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Greg. It is nine o'clock and it's time for another video. And today I'm back with another magic stuff. And specifically, I'm going to be talking about three tricks, three tenyo tricks that you might not have seen before. I gotta tell you, I've been doing Magic TV now for maybe about two years, coming up on two years. I've done a lot of these three trick series. The amount of times that people ask me to look at tenyo tricks, look at the newer tenyo tricks, look at the older tenyo tricks, and review some of them from time to time. And I love tenyo, and I've I've spoken about tenyo before, but I've never really taken a deep dive into tenyo tricks. And uh, it is the question that comes up on this channel over and over again. So over the course of the next six months, I'm going to do a few uh, a few of these three trick series on Tenyo magic. I'm going to uh, perform and highlight some Tenyo tricks that you might never have seen before. It's, it's difficult to say, hey, here's some Tenyo tricks that you've never seen before, because Tenyo is obviously always wildly so popular. Um, but, you know, newer people that get into magic... Uh, that haven't been in it for as long as me uh, or, or, you know, a lot of the other old farts like me, then they might not have seen some of the Tenyo tricks that have come out in the previous years. Uh, because the thing with Tenyo is a lot of the time they get discontinued or they go out of stock for long periods of time. And there's always a buzz about the new tricks that are coming out. Like at the moment, everyone's buzzing about the 2023 range. But then the stuff that came out years and years and years ago, they might not have seen. And the thing with Tenyo is it's always really good, isn't it? It's always really clever. A lot of the time with Tenyo, I tend to find that the method is better than the trick. Now, that's not to say that the trick's not good. The trick is always good, but the method is sometimes a little bit better. I don't know if you guys can relate to that. Uh, uh, a lot of the older Tenyo tricks that uh, I can think of in my head, a lot of those older Tenyo tricks, I remember getting them when I was a kid, when I was a lot younger, and, and just like being absolutely amazed by the method behind the trick. Last time I was at Alakazam, I was speaking to Peter Nardi about this, and we were talking about Eye of the Idol. I don't know if you guys remember Eye of the Idol, and just how genuinely awesome the, uh, the method was for it. And it's not just Eye of the Idol. There's some amazing tricks. So over the course of the following weeks and months, I'm going to be doing a few videos on Tenyo. Uh, and I'm going to be looking at some of the older Tenyo tricks, performing them, talking about what I like about them. Because the other thing that people say about Tenyo is they say that the tricks aren't performable. And you know what? I don't know if I agree with that. don't know if I agree with that. I think that a lot of the Tenyo tricks are performable. But... Um, yeah, I think a lot of the Tenyo tricks are performed. Not all of them. I mean, all of them are clever. They would fool uh, laymen. Don't get me wrong. All of the tricks that Tenyo bring out, they are clever. They would fool laymen. But some of them look a bit like a toy, don't they? They kind of look a little bit plasticky. They look like a toy. It's not the sort of thing maybe that you want to bring out in a professional gig. But I think you can justify it. And, and that's not always the case. So the first trick that I'm going to be looking at, and you're going to see it in a minute... You know, this is a trick that I've done in my kids' shows for years and uh, years and years and years. And I know a lot of kids' entertainers that do do this in their kids' show as well. I remember seeing, um, for me, one of the best kids' entertainers in the world, uh, John Kimmons, uh, Kimmo. And I remember going and watching him. And he performed this uh, in his kids' show at Cadbury World and absolutely blew, blew his audience away. So tenure tricks, the point is, tenure tricks can be performed uh, in the real world. And a lot of the time, you know, Ryland, my son Ryland, he's going to be performing a couple of the tricks on this video. He, he's got, coming up on, what, 15,000 followers on Instagram right now, which is more followers than I can possibly ever dream of. Um, and, and every single day he, he gets more followers. And a lot of the time he performs Tenyo tricks on, on, on Instagram and just they go crazy. I mean, the views that he gets for them is just insane. Because a lot of the time, people that watch other magicians on Instagram, they haven't seen this stuff before. That's one of the things that I see Ryland doing. He performs a lot of older tricks that maybe a lot of the TikTok and Instagram magicians don't do. And, and because of that, he's presenting something new and something different to everyone else out there. And so if you're a social media magician, Tenyo are a fantastic source of tricks that you can actually use want to go your Instagram following. Anyway, with that all being said, that was, uh, that was a very long way of saying this is going to be the first in a sporadic series of videos 
all about the best tricks that Tenyo have ever put out. And today I'm going to be looking at three tricks and we're going to start off right now with the first trick. Okay, so the first trick we're going to be talking about is Four Nightmares DX. And this is actually available for most good magic dealers. Um, this is a rope trick. And this is the trick I was talking about earlier on. Uh, this is a trick that I have performed for years in my kids' show. This is a trick that you could absolutely do close up. Um, and it's a very, very baffling trick. I mean, it's really, really deceptive. Um, it's a very quick trick. Uh, which which makes it absolutely perfect as a as a opener, and I'll be honest with you, I'd have absolutely no problem doing this. Uh, big tables, uh, I'd have no problem doing this in a cabaret show. I'd have no problem doing this in a in a um, in a kid show. I do do it in kid shows. This is just a really strong trick, and it's a very different trick to a lot of other things out there, because a lot of tricks are always the same. It's kind of cut and restored rope. And, uh, and, and, and that's it, you know, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of sameness when it comes to rope magic. Well, this is very different, and uh, it uses gimmicked rope, obviously. I don't think Tenyo has ever released anything that's not gimmicked, have they? So it uses gimmick rope, but it uses gimmick rope in a really uh, interesting way. And it's a three-phase routine. Uh, I think the original instructions came with the fourth phase, but I think years ago I ditched the fourth phase. I, I might be wrong. Um, but each phase builds really nicely. Uh, I'm, we'll talk about it in a second, but uh, if you haven't seen it before, let me do a performance to Matt for you. So this is a performance of Four Nightmares DX by Tenya. Matt, how you doing, Matt? All right, dude. Got two ropes. That is a uh, long rope, and this one here is a small rope. You see the difference. One's long, one's small. It's noticeable. Can, can you? Can you? It is noticeable, right? You can see. Yeah. Yeah. This this one's very small, and this one's. Uh, uh, very big, but I'm going to show you a miracle. Are you ready for uh, a miracle with uh, with these ropes? Yeah, watch. Do you see the two pieces of rope? Yeah, <clears throat> the small one and the big one. Yeah. Yeah. Watch. If I just snap my fingers, do you know what happens? What? I can make them both the same size. I think that's pretty good. What do you reckon? Now that one there is the same size as that one there. How's it look? Does it look good? Looking good. Yeah. Yeah. Let me do this again. Uh, I'll make them into a big piece of rope. Are you ready? Watch. If I just do this, there you go. Now they're the uh, the same size. What do you reckon? That's no, one, one loop. That's brilliant. Are you impressed? Well done. Obviously, it's not very impressive until I snap my fingers. And when I do, I can move the knot down there. <laughs> let me do that again. I mean, if, yeah. Hold that. Um, now we've got a long piece of rope again. So weird. Um, do you want to see that again? I mean, I'm not meant to repeat the trick. Would you like to? We don't need that. Would you like to see it again? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to take a piece of rope. Yes. And I'm just going to tie it into a loop. Well, not tie, but I'm going to. I'm going to make a loop. Does that look like a loop? That should look like a loop. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what it should look like a loop? Right. Because it is a loop. Uh, but if I do this, Need that bit either. There you go. <laughs> you look at that. That's so clever. Isn't that weird? So you go. So that's Four Nightmares Day X, uh, DX by Tenyo. This is a, there's a lot to like about this trick, and the first thing is it's really visual. Like it's really super visual, which is really an important thing when you're performing for like kids shows. And as I say, I do this a lot in kids shows. I do this a lot in a family show environment. It's so visual. Each phase, there's only three phases. So if you think about the actual structure of the routine, the first phase, you have a small rope, you have a big piece of rope, they become the same size. The second, uh, the second phase, the rope goes together into one long piece and you pull the knot off. And the third phase, you make a loop and you pull the loop off the rope, right? So those are the three phases. And each phase is super visual. Each phase builds. And the final phase at the end where you pull that loop off, nobody just ever sees that coming. It's so strong. Um, now, the other nice thing is because we're using gimmicked rope here, the displays are a lot cleaner than you would have if you were using fiber optics or something like that, for example, where you have to cover something at one point or another point. Because of how the ropes are constructed, 
there are at pretty much every single phase at the beginning and at the end they are very fair displays you know you start off by showing a small piece and a big piece and you can see that is definitely a small piece and a big piece there's no ambiguity there and then all of a sudden you see the small and the big piece and they go together into the same size and you show them as the same size there's no ambiguity there then when you tie the ropes and you tie the knot they can see they can see absolutely everything and that moment at the end where you make a loop honestly at that moment when you pull that loop off everybody can see that happen really really strong when that loop comes off and you're left with that one piece of rope now the last piece of it it's not really examinable uh some people have asked me when they've seen me do this what are the angles like the angles are great yes you are using i don't think it gives too much away to say that you're using as part of the method you're using rope magnets and i've had people say to me in the past are oh, the rope magnets obvious is it obvious that you know from an audience point of view no you can do this close up and nobody will be able to see anything they are so well made but the uh, the rope magnets d do all the work for you really in essence um so it can be done close up now at the end you're left with one singular piece of rope that has a regular end and a magnet at the other end you can have that examined now you wouldn't want people to look at it for too long but it looks like the ends are just um uh, kind of glued it doesn't look like there's a magnet there so that last piece of rope you probably saw me do it to matt you can you can examine it not too much you can say and that's the final piece of rope and they can pick it up and pull it and then you can take it back it's an instant reset or, or almost an instant reset uh as you walk away you can just literally just do a three second thing in your reset and it, it is very practical for a walk around situation you're not using a table in fact it was more of a struggle doing it sitting down uh it's designed really to be a stand-up piece um when i i have done it walk around in the past and i've just put the small piece of rope in my left jacket pocket i've put the big piece of rope in my right jacket pocket and i've just took the rope out and just gone for it that works really really well um and it also it's one of those routines and this is a bit of a cliche in magic but you know it really does it packs small and it plays big it really does play to a big audience like you could do this in front of 50 60 70 people and it would really play to the whole audience but it packs small it packs into into absolutely nothing uh, you want to make sure that the rope stays clean obviously you don't want to dirty it up what i do when i'm traveling with it is i put it into a, uh, a ziploc bag that keeps it nice and pristine ready for the next performance but outside of that it's also relatively easy to do considering it looks so impressive there's only one move at the beginning of the second phase and anyone who's done any rope magic before will know what that phase uh, what, that, what that move is but outside of that there's no moves and it looks great um, so it makes a fantastic opener because it's quick, it's visual, you can see it from a distance and it really does establish credibility. Um, yeah, I mean, that's your first trick. If you haven't tried Four Nightmares DX, it's a really great trick. Go and have a look at it. You can get it from Tenure Magic. Now let's look at the second trick um, that you might not have seen before, the second Tenure trick that you might not have seen before. So the second Tenure trick you might not have seen before uh, is uh four uh is it f uh fourth dimensional appearance i might have got that wrong i probably have got that wrong it might be 4d something or other it'll be up on the screen uh i'm very very sorry it will be up on the screen but basically in essence what this is is this is the production of a statue of liberty now this is something that ryland's done on his social media and crushed his social media with this trick but not only has he done it on his social media and crossed this, uh, he's actually done. So Ryland's got a residency, he's got a restaurant residency. And this is something that he's done in the past in a restaurant residency. And it looks really, really good. You'd have to do this in the right time, right place. And you have to be the right performer to get away with this. And what I mean by that is this is one of those tricks that could potentially be looked at as a toy. Now, that's where Ryland has an advantage. He can get away with that because, you know, he's a kid. <laughs> he, he can get away with stuff like that. But uh, um, the effect is so strong and the hook is so strong on this that it is worth um, thinking about how, that, that, how you could do this in a real world situation. This is something that you could absolutely do in a parlor show. I'll, I'll be honest, I've never done it in a parlor show. 
but I could see that this would work really well in a parlour show. And uh, I mean, on social media, this absolutely kills, but not because the angles are bad. I mean, this is actually a really practical trick. I'll go through all of that in a bit. If you haven't seen it, let's have a look at a Ryland performing this to camera. This is a performance of the trick to camera. Uh, when you've had a look at the performance, we'll talk about why I like it so much. Okay, so you know how David Copperfield made the Statue of Liberty disappear and then appear. So I'm gonna try and make it appear just like this. Watch this. So I've got the, like the wall that like David Copperfield used to hide it, just like that. I'm gonna put that there. Now the thing, other thing I have is I have this. Now you can see through it. I'm just gonna put that right there. So as you can see, there's nothing anywhere. I'm just gonna put this back there. Watch this. And like that, I can just make the statue of liberty appear just like that. Okay, so that's the trick. Basically, you're making the Statue of Liberty disappear, uh, appear. Now, that's what I mean about an amazing hook. This has a great hook because the amount of times that people say to me, how did you get into magic? What is it that got you into magic? And it's very easy at that point to say, well, you know, I've been into magic since I was a little kid. In fact, I remember when I was younger watching David Copperfield on TV and he just absolutely blew my mind. Do you remember the specials? Do you remember when David, uh, when David Copperfield made the Statue of Liberty disappear and then reappear again? Everybody will say, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. And then you go, well, well would you like to see that happen right now? Would you like me to make the Statue of Liberty appear right now? And of course, it sounds outlandish. It sounds like a ridiculous statement. And then you go on to actually do that with these props. And that's what I mean about how the props are justifiable. Because, you know, you, you're talking about this whole David Copperfield Statue of Liberty. It makes sense that you'd have a scaled down version of what you'd need to make the Statue of Liberty appear, right? So uh, I think you can get away with this. And I don't think it's too much of a problem. Uh, in terms of the actual trick itself, I mean, it's a startling appearance. This is a perfect example of what I was talking about with Tenyo having really clever methods. The methods behind this are super, super, super clever. Um, you've got various different um, principles at work here, and they all kind of work together to create this really strong piece. Now, the angles are really 180. You wouldn't have somebody to the side of you because they'd see what's going on. You wouldn't want somebody behind you that'd see what's going on. But 180 is absolutely fine. So if you're working in a restaurant, for example, and you're in control of your angles on the restaurant tables, that wouldn't be too much of a problem. The other factor that you'd have to take into consideration is your pocket space, because obviously you're having to carry all of this stuff around with you, which again, isn't a problem if you're working a restaurant, because if you work in a restaurant, or at least when I used to work restaurants on a regular basis, I would have an area that I had access to that nobody else did and I would just have all of my tricks there and in between tables I'd have no problem going and getting a special prop for one particular table or performing to a table and saying would you like me to do one last thing for you let me just go and get something I've got something very special over here and then going and getting the prop I'd need to perform for them. Uh, so that's not really an issue in a restaurant. The other place that I could see this working outside of social media and restaurants is I can see this working really well in a um, uh, uh, in a parlor show. Because again, in a parlor show, normally everybody's in front of you, you've got more control over the angles, but also bringing all of these little bits and pieces out, you know, you've got a sat down audience. I think that that wouldn't be too much of a problem. You could talk about, uh, you know, when you were a kid, you wanted to make the Statue of Liberty disappear. You wanted to be like you wanted to be like David Copperfield. Uh, you even got all of these bits and pieces to try and make the, uh, the Statue of Liberty appear, and this is what you came up with. And I think it would really. I don't know. I've never done it in a parlor show. As I'm talking about this, I'm thinking, yeah, that would be really good. Um, I think it's the sort of thing that could really be a feature of a parlor show. Uh, but it, it, the thing with this trick is it's a really strong trick, great for social media, but it's one of those right time, right place tricks, right? You couldn't really do it all of the time. There are certain angle issues, but if you can find a place to do it, um, this is incredible because you just saw the performance, right? You show the base, you show the wall, you show the box, you show everything one last time. They can see through and as you lift up, that statue appears. And it's that beautiful moment as, as you're lifting up 
that statue is just appearing right there on the base of the uh, on the base of the wall. It looks incredible, and as I say, it's a very, very, very clever method. And the method is so satisfying. It's the sort of thing that when you buy it and you learn the method, you feel satisfied that you uh, you know you, that you kind of have this amazing trick that you've learned. The other thing, and, and talking about that, the other thing that you could do with it is have it in your house. You know, you could have this whole thing set up on a display cabinet um and and when people come around your house and they ask about magic and you bring the subject around to david copperfield you can take it off your shelf and you can bring it down and you can show them it and it'd be a real talking point so yeah um that's really good that's all i've got to say about that now we're going to look at one last trick um from tenure that you might not have seen before Okay, so the final trick uh, that I'm going to be presenting, well, actually, Ryland's going to be performing for you. For the final trick that I'm going to be talking about today is going to be, um, it's the Miracle Coin Penetration. Now, this is quite old. Um, this is probably about 10 years old at this point. Uh, it's not the newest tenure trick, but by God, is it good. Uh, now, this sort of thing has been done before. There's a lot of people that have done versions of this trick before where um, a coin appears inside a glass, right? I mean, obviously, the Silver Odyssey by uh, uh, Collector's Workshop, which is this, a stage version of this trick using multiple coins. Um, but, I mean, there's so many different ways and so many different versions of this. Uh, and, and this was the precursor to Roller Coaster by Hanson Chen, um, which took this principle and applied it to what looks like a, a coaster that you would find in a pub, um, sort of a cardboard coaster, right? Uh, but I still think that this is uh, as good as um, the roller coaster thing. Basically what happens is you have a coin and the coin penetrates inside a glass in an incredible, impossible way. Now, I'm gonna get Ryland to perform this as well. One of the reasons we're going to get Ryland to perform this is because Ryland actually does do this um, in a gigging situation. This is a, a trick that Ryland does do, and uh, I, I'm going to I'm going to let him perform it for you. After he's performed it, we'll talk about why it's so good. Okay, so I've got a coin and I've got a glass. As you can see, I have a coin. I have a glass. Now, what I want you to do is I just want you to watch the coin right there. Watch this, and I can, it goes in the glass like that. Now, maybe you miss it, so I'll do it again. Watch the coin. Right there. Like that. In fact, what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to put the glass upside down like this. You can see it here. Watch this. I'm going to take it. Like that. And I can push it through the glass just like that. How cool is that? Okay, so what you just saw there is a really simple performance of the trick, right? So it was a really, uh, really simple three-phase routine. So in that particular routine, Ryan was just making a coin appear in a glass, making a coin appear in a glass again, and then the final phase used the gimmick. And the final phase, very, very, the, the, the gimmick is obviously the coaster you put the glass on. And what it allows you to do is, in a very, very easy way, it allows a coin to penetrate through the glass into uh, penetrate through and into the glass and obviously what's happening here i'm sure any experienced magicians will know that what's happening here is the coin is being shot up from the uh from the coaster inside the glass right but the method that's being used here is really good and the instructions that originally came with this they used a self-working way of doing this so they had a, a load of coins inside the glass they picked uh, uh they suggested you tip the coins into the glass take one of the take <laughs> fake take one of the coins and push it through the glass and so you're not even really needing to do a vanish which is an absolute viable way of doing it if you don't know how to palm a coin or you've got no sleight of hand skill or anything like that but where I think this really comes into its own is as a finale to a multi-phase routine. So I got Ryan to perform that very quickly, but when he actually does it in a gig, he uses uh, more of a shot glass type thing, but a larger, kind of like a whiskey tumbler, right? We didn't have any lying around. His close-up case was at the office, so we just grabbed the glass. Uh, but he normally uses a whiskey tumbler and he does a coins across with four coins. 
Um, so he'll he'll literally, as he walks over to the table, he'll take the glass and he'll take the coaster and he'll put it down on the table and he'll say, look, I'm going to get back to that a little bit later on. Do whatever he's going to do. Then he brings over the glass, has, has the four coins examined and does coins across with four coins, um, which he's put on his YouTube channel. Then he says, well, I'll tell you what, let's try and do that one more time. Pick a coin for me, will you? So they pick a coin and he goes, brilliant. I tell you what, can you turn the glass over and put it on the on the coaster? That way there's no way I can cheat, right? He then does the vanish and he picks the other three coins up and puts them away in his pocket. So he's ditching everything. And then he can come and do this and everything's examinable. And it's a really nice finale to a multi-coins across into a glass type routine. And the coaster doesn't look out of place. A lot of, we talked earlier on about tenure tricks and how they look a little bit toy-like, right? This doesn't, it just looks like a coaster. Um, it, it, it doesn't really, I, no, it doesn't look as much like a, like a, a traditional coaster as something like Roller Coaster by Hanson Chen. But it doesn't look out of place at all. If you were going around someone's house and they had coasters out and the coaster looks like this, you wouldn't question it at all. It looks, it looks fine. Uh, and the nice thing about this is, unlike something like Silver Odyssey, for example, which relies on servos and it relies on remote controls and so on and so forth, this is very low tech. It is very, very low tech. Literally, you just have to push down on the glass. It's going to do the work for you. And it's very, very easy to do, but it looks really, really deceptive. It would also make a great opener. So if you wanted to use this as an opener, this would make a great opening routine. You know, just to take a glass, take a coin, push the coin through the glass. Or you could combine this with something like Flight Case. So you could combine it by starting off with a bit of sleight of hand, then put a deck of cards on top and have the coins go through the deck of cards and then finish off by putting the whole thing on the coaster and having it go through from the other side. So many different options as to what you can do with this. And, and the nice thing is when you push down, it's done. The reset will literally take about 10 seconds. As you walk away from the table, 10 seconds and you reset. You can just put the coaster back in your pocket. You can put the glass back in your pocket and you reset, ready to go again. So it's not for everybody. But, you know, it ticks a lot of boxes when you think of commercial magic. It's, it's quick. It's visual. Um, it's, uh, it can use borrowed coins if you want it to use borrowed coins. There's a lot to love about this trick. There really is. And, uh, and, and, and it is commercial. It is commercial. It really is. Now, I personally think this is more commercial than Roller Coaster by Hanson Chen because I think it looks more odd taking out your pocket a... Uh, a, a, you know, a cardboard coaster than something like that. But, you know, it's, it's horses for courses. Um, the bottom line is it's a very clever method. It's very fooling. It's very easy to do. And it wouldn't look out of place at a gig. Whether you choose to do it or not, it wouldn't look out of place at a gig. So there you go. That's the Miracle Coin Penetration by Tenyo. So there you go, guys. That's another three tricks that you've never seen before. This time, three Tenno tricks that you've never seen before. Do me a favor. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Now, you want to see more videos like this? All you got to do is like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. And I'm going to be back again tomorrow at six o'clock uh, with a Magic Live and at nine o'clock with another video. So thanks once again for joining me. If you haven't already done so, please go check out The Netrix. It's www.thenetrix.com. That's www.thenetrix.com. Go check it out and see what all the fuss is about. We're uploading five new tricks every fortnight and the platform continues to grow and grow and grow and the changes that we're putting into place in there is just incredible. So the best is yet to come. Uh, thanks very much for watching this video and uh, I'll see you again soon. My name's Craig from Magic TV. Mm -hmm.